Hello YouTubers, Jim from Ohio back again with another one year update on some of the solar projects that I uh, worked on last year and shared with everyone. This is going to be an update on the hybrid solar hot water uh, device and uh, I'll list the details in the description down in this video for where I purchased this and where you can get one if you're interested. But just to recap very quickly what this is, uh, this is a circuit card that you order, you mount it in your own box. Uh, in addition to the box I did put a, uh, a breaker as well as uh, some uh, uh, protection, some uh, high voltage or lightning protection in it. And uh, what this does is it, there's a cable that comes out of it and you go down and you connect it to the lower element in an electric hot water heater. Now this will not work in a gas water heater. If you wanted to use it with a gas water heater you would probably need to uh, have an electric water heater as a preheat tank that would feed over into the gas uh, water heater. But uh, I've had this installed now for a little over a year so I wanted to provide an update. I know I've gotten a lot of questions on YouTube about uh, how well is it working and uh, am I seeing a, a big difference in my power bill due to it. So I'd like to go over some of the numbers. Uh, I would like to say that uh, just off the top of my head this is working very good. Uh, this is one of those devices that if you want a set it and forget it type solar install this would be the first thing I would recommend you do as part of a DIY project. So let's go look at some numbers to uh, let everybody see exactly what this has done for me. Okay, we're over at the computer now and I wanted to share some of the numbers that I've captured. Now, just to let everybody know, these numbers were captured with my Sense Whole Home Energy Monitoring Solution. If you don't have one of those, you may need to look at a different way to capture these or actually install a meter onto the uh, line feeding the hot water heater. So a couple things that we, everybody needs to take into consideration. Uh, the size of the tank, your results are going to be different from mine if you have a different size tank. Uh, mine is an 80 gallon electric water tank. If you had a smaller tank, uh, most standard tanks are either 40 or 50 gallons, you would see much better results. Obviously the more water there is to heat, uh, the longer it is going to take to recover that heat. So uh, with my 80 gallon tank, it's going to take me a lot longer uh, period of time. So I think a 40 or 50 gallon tank would probably be much more efficient with this system. The other thing to consider is the time of day that you're either taking showers or doing laundry. Now I get up early in the morning each day for work and I typically jump in the shower about 6 a.m. Uh, therefore, uh, because there's no sun outside after my shower, the electric element does have to come back on to recover the uh, heat in the tank. So if you were to shower much later in the day when the sun shines up, again, that would be much more efficient. Um, the other thing I wanted to look at is the over co overall cost of the system. Now I put about $900 into my complete system in terms of at least my hot water system and uh, I did use uh, used solar panels. I picked up three 315 watt panels for $100 each. Now obviously if you're using new panels you're probably going to pay a little bit more than that so it may cost you anywhere from twelve hundred to fifteen hundred dollars to put together the same system I did. The cost that I put together were the cost of the device two hundred ninety five dollars uh, the three hundred dollars for the panels I think I had about a hundred and fifty dollars into the materials to build the rack about a hundred dollars in wiring and uh, the uh, quick disconnects on both ends of my uh, 
uh, the wiring that runs from the panels to the box and then the actual housing that I mounted the hybrid device in I think was about in the neighborhood of 15 to 20 dollars so I've got about roughly nine hundred dollars into my system you may be able to do better than that uh, otherwise it, it may cost you a little bit more uh, so the first full month of monitoring that I did in my home was in April of 2018 that's when I purchased the sense home monitor so unfortunately I'm not going to be able to go back further than that date to provide any numbers so what I'd like to start out with first is do some comparisons so here you can see in 2018 uh, April this is just the usage of the hot water heater during this month the hot water heater used 158.3 kilowatt hours which averages out to about 5.27 kilowatt hours per day now you compare that with April 2019 which is a date after I installed this device and you can see I dropped down from 158 kilowatts to only 84 kilowatts which comes out to about 2.8 kilowatt usage each day of electricity being pulled from the grid to heat my hot water now in May I used uh, in 2018 I used 166 kilowatt hours of power where in May of 2019 I was able to drop that down to only 71.4 kilowatts by use of this device June 140 9 kilowatt last year this year only 79.8 kilowatts uh, and then in July of last year uh, 132 kilowatts compared to July of this year 72.7 kilowatts now, I'm not sure if you'll get the same uh, output if you install this device that I got as I mentioned all of these up here come into play uh, mainly the first two items up here uh, but I am seeing a significant savings in the amount of power my electric hot water is hot water heater is using uh, this year versus last year now uh, going back a little deeper into the numbers uh, when I pull the graph uh, this is the graph from actually it's uh, this should be August 2018 not 2019 so August 2018 is when I first installed the hybrid hot water heater and uh, you can see about when I installed it uh, this was the first half of the month running on regular commercial power on the hot water heater and this was when I installed the hybrid solution you can see right away the numbers drop down significantly uh, I think this was the date uh, well, this was probably Saturday I know I installed the device on a Sunday and you can see that uh, I consumed absolutely no power from the grid on either Sunday or Monday in the hot water heater uh, those days uh, all of the power was produced with the hybrid controller and then this was the rest of the month then moving on to September of 2018 you can see uh, this is just a portion of August I used 133 and a half kilowatts where the whole month of September where I was running on the new hybrid controller uh, I dropped the usage down to only 68.4 kilowatts of power for the whole month and you can see up here the hot water heater came on 141 times uh, for a total of uh, looks like uh, well I'm not sure how to read this uh, that's the total time on so I guess that'd be uh, 24 hours plus 12 hours and 49 minutes uh, where here the entire month of September in 2018 uh, the total uh, uh, consumption uh, it came on 66 times and for a total time of 40 or I'm sorry 18 hours and 47 minutes of usage moving on to October uh, you can see the numbers did go up from 68 kilowatts to 82 kilowatts obviously in October the days are starting to get shorter I'm not going to get as much solar uh, uh, power uh, coming into the panels uh, so obviously I am going to uh, uh, 
have to use more commercial power as the days get shorter but still that's a signif significant savings over uh, the year prior um, the um, uh, month of November 2018 uh, you can see the days are even getting shorter here in Ohio. We have a lot of cloud coverage and we have uh, very short days as we move into November, December, January. So we are up to 138 kilowatts used by the hot water heater. Um, I'm not sure uh, what November 2017 looked like since I didn't have the sense meter at that time. Uh, but uh, even still, I can see that it didn't come on at all on this day. It barely came on this day at all. Uh, so as we get into uh, December, uh, again, short days. Uh, doesn't look like we used as much power as we did in November. Uh, looked like it came on a fewer number of times. Uh, but uh, let's see, moving on. In January, you can see uh, my power consumption jumps up significantly from the grid making hot water because January we just have very very short days here in Ohio. Uh, in uh, February you can see the power starting to drop down again uh, 120 kilowatts of usage and uh, then we move into March we're still at 120 watts and I, here's something I wanted to kind of point out uh, this was May of this year, 2019, and you can see here the first seven days of May, the, the first day that I actually consumed any power from the grid on the hot water heater was Wednesday, May the 8th. So that means the first seven days, the first entire week in May, I consumed absolutely no power at all from the grid to make hot water. Uh, also on this date and this date I barely used any power but here in May we're back down to 71 total kilowatts uh, being consumed from the grid. So compared with when I started uh, to where I am now I, I would say that I reduce my power load on the grid for making hot water by at least 50 percent so I do have to give this device a big thumbs up uh, at the uh, I, I have not done the total cost of ownership to determine what the payback period would be uh, but uh, a typical hot water solar hot water system is going to run you anywhere from uh, I priced them out from five thousand to ten thousand dollars where this I've got less than a thousand dollars so I'm gonna guess I probably have about a, a five to six year uh, turnaround time before this is going to pay for itself but do I think it was worth it yes absolutely would I do it again yes absolutely are there any changes that I would do the next time around uh, other than those I mentioned in my previous video about the uh, adjustment of the solar panels on the rack as far as the uh, center of gravity so that I can easier uh, it's easier for me to adjust the angle of the panels that's pretty much the only thing I would do different with this uh, now I, I would like to point out to everyone I think if you go back and watch the first video that I put together on the hybrid system um, I did mention the temperature that I had set the water thermostat on uh, both the upper and element of my hot water heater and I did do some tweaking over the first week or two that this device was installed um, I, I believe the settings that I currently have I set the lower element to 150 degrees and that way as long as the Sun is shining the tank is going to receive uh, power and it is going to produce heat. Uh, the upper element I believe I have it set at 125 degrees. That way if the Sun is shining I'm going to make hot water heat and uh, that hot water is going to rise to the top of the tank and keep the upper element from coming on at all. However if the temperature in the tank 
ever drops below 125 degrees, that upper element's going to kick on and it's going to heat the water in the tank so that it is 125 degrees at the top of the tank. Uh, so that's basically how the system works. Uh, I think when I first set this up, I had the lower element set at about 135, 140 degrees and the upper element I had set lower and uh, I did change that. I did receive a couple comments about uh, the risk of uh, Legionella uh, uh, bacteria getting into the water if it's below 120 degrees. So that's why I raised the upper element uh, and I ra raised the lower the lower element just so that I can produce as much hot water uh, as possible. Now uh, is my tank getting up to 150 degrees ever? I honestly don't know. I don't have a thermostat or I'm sorry I don't have a thermometer on that. That is something that I would like to uh, maybe uh, do later down the road just to improve and, and monitor the temperature of the tank. Uh, I know there are times that uh, we definitely have to turn the water down. Uh, my wife is a hairdresser and she sometimes works out of the house and I know uh, she has pointed out to me that she has noticed a considerable difference in the temperature of the water coming out of the tap. Uh, so if you do have uh, children or elderly people in your house, you may not want to bump that uh, lower thermostat up as high as I've done it. Uh, in our household there are only my wife and I and occasionally we have some guests stay with us for the weekend and all of those guests are adults so uh, I'm not too concerned about anybody scalding themselves. Uh, but uh, like I said I have to give this system a thumbs up. Uh, if anyone has questions, feel free to put a comment down below. Uh, if you're interested in installing a system like this yourself, be sure to check the uh, description down below this video. I'll put a link where you can uh, go and purchase one of these yourself. Uh, I'm not an affiliate for this device. Um, it's something that uh, I just picked up to try for myself. I, I found it works great, so I don't mind promoting it uh, for the guy that uh, invented this and, and put it together. But as I mentioned, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. I'll do my best to get an answer for you. Thanks for watching. Take care. And if you're not a subscriber, uh, please be sure to subscribe to the channel, and uh, that way you'll be sure to receive any future updates that I do. Thank you and take care. Bye-bye.